This video is going to answer the question, what does a USPAP compliant machinery and equipment appraisal look like? We are Advantage Liquidity Partners Limited. We're members of the NEBB Institute, which is an appraisal institute covering machinery and equipment. As such, we hold the CMEA designation, which stands for Certified Machinery and Equipment Appraiser. And as being as part of the institute, we're covered by a strict code of ethics. And you can find a copy of that on our website. We serve the Maritimes and Eastern Canada from our Moncton, New Brunswick location. So what's the difference between a dealer opinion of value or a USPAP appraisal? So sometimes people will go to an equipment dealer and ask them, what do you think this equipment is worth? Can you put it down in writing for me, please? And so what the dealer is going to do is they're going to look at that equipment. They probably have firsthand knowledge of, of used equipment that's been sold in the market. Certainly, they maybe they take in trades of used equipment when they sell new stuff and, and they have all, these, all this local knowledge of the market. So it's going to be an opinion based on their experience. What we've typically seen is that a dealer opinion of value might list out the equipment that's located in a place and they're going to put a price that they think this is worth. And here's the issue. Uh, the third point is that dealers typically have a financial interest in future dealings with the equipment seller or buyer. And so this creates a conflict of interest potentially. And lenders and other parties that might be participating in some kind of transaction where they're relying upon a third party opinion of value for collateral, for example, understand that there can be this conflict of interest. Um, as well, dealers are business people, and many of them have no specific appraisal training or affiliations. So we've seen uh, dealer opinion of values for uh, dealer opinion of value, for example, reports where they'll list the items, but they won't have any kind of description as to what sort of value they're describing. And the type of value indicates basically what sort of selling conditions would be associated with the price. And this is very important for someone who may, for example, have to act towards liquidating the equipment um, through seizing collateral in making a loan. Um, on the other hand, a USPAP appraisal, um, in a USPAP appraisal, each capital item is researched and a market or depreciation method is applied for each item. The value is defensible in court and backed by data. We maintain records on every single piece of research that we do for each capital item. And the only interest that an appraiser has is in that appraisal document. So we don't act or, or uh, advocate on the, for the interest of any one particular party. Our only interest is in the defensibility of the appraisal document and our reputation as being objective and, uh, and not subject to biases. And so we're held to task by our institute and the code of ethics but furthermore, we also make sure that we avoid any kind of conflict through the methods of how we undertake engagements. For example, um, CMEA appraisals are paid for in advance of any work being done on the file. Therefore, the appraiser is never uh, under any sort of duress or pressure from whoever is hiring them to deliver a predetermined value. And so these are the differences between what an equipment dealer might put together and a USPAP certified appraisal. So after reviewing that, let's take a look uh, what it, what's actually inside and, um, and see what we find. So this is a report that was put together back in 2019 and we've gone through and we've blocked out anything that might identify this particular client. So to begin with, we've got our main introduction page here. Uh, and then there's a, trans, a letter of transmittal where we're, we're um, basically saying to this, in this case, it would have been a lender. We're saying, here's our scenario. So in this case, we're looking at fair market value and continued use. And we're pointing out the fact that if the items should be sold in an, under another scenario, such as orderly liquidation or forced liquidation, then of course, this value would not be holding up. This is based on fair market value in continued use. Then we have a, a table of contents. As you can see, this report goes is 37 pages long uh, and ends with a section of photographs. There's general information about what an appraisal is. There is a summary of key facts uh, about this particular report. 
We identify the scope of work, what we actually did, how we did the research, et cetera. And this carries on for a couple of, of pages. Well, we identify the degree to which the property was inspected. So in this case, there was an on-site visit conducted on May 21st of that year. We then talk about the extent of research we do, uh, the data, uh, type of analysis, what we do on site. So for example, we collect information, we photograph things, we look for the serial numbers, but we are not mechanics. We don't operate the machinery or make sure that everything's in, in perfect mechanical order. So with respect to somebody, for example, buying a business, um, due diligence into making sure that the, the state of repair of the equipment is still a burden that a buyer would face. We take people at their word. If they say the machine is being used every day and it's in working order, then that's what we put in the report. And we don't have the skills to validate that uh, by investigating every kind of piece of machinery. We talk about the appropriate level of market if this uh, item were ever to be sold and who the specific user of the report is. Every user is going to have a different end or different need in, in using a certified machinery and equipment evaluation. And so we need to identify the user and identify their purpose in order to make sure that the definition of value is appropriate. Uh, this talks about confidentiality, overall condition, the intended use. In this case, it was for banking and collateral purposes. And uh, what our understanding of the ownership interest was in the property that was that was appraised. So for example, in a, in a business that may have some leased, prop, leased equipment on site, uh, we will sometimes include the leased pieces of equipment in the appraisal report. But when we're made aware that the equipment is leased, meaning that the title is the name of a finance company somewhere, we'll note that in the report. In some cases, the ownership of the equipment would not transfer. An example might be a corner store that was given a uh, refrigerator by uh, you know, a, a soft drink company. That piece of equipment um, doesn't belong to the business. And when the business is sold, it's, that piece of equipment still won't belong to the business. It belongs to the manufacturer of that soft drink. And so in that case, we may not include the, the refrigerator at all. Uh, statement of limiting conditions. So this is required by USPAP, where we actually put in all of the different knowns and unknowns and conditions for which the report can be used or how um, our liability is going to be limited as appraisers. And this goes on for several pages. And then we have the definitions of condition. So when we take a look at the equipment, we will note what condition that the equipment is in. Um, and then here is the definition of fair market value in continued use. This is the definition that was asked for for this particular report. But then we also include all of the different definitions. And you can see that there are 11 different definitions of value. And this needs to be sorted out in advance between the user and the appraiser to determine which value or values are going to be useful for for the purposes of the of the um, for the purposes of the um, user of the report. And so, in the next section, we have the methods evaluation where we explain how the cost approach works, how the direct market data report uh, valuation methodology would work. We talk about the income approach and how it, it doesn't really apply in very many instances to um, machinery and equipment appraisal. We talk about here of the actual sources that were contacted in looking at the particular pieces of equipment that were identified in this report. And then we have additional considerations. So these are all again required by USPAP to be in the report. Um, what kind of estimated exposure time we would expect would take to sell the equipment if it were ever uh, put up for sale and under the kinds of conditions and any extraordinary conditions or assumptions that we make. And oftentimes this section is just boilerplate, but sometimes there are some pretty specific assumptions we have to make in the evaluation of, of machinery and equipment. And then there's the comments regarding capital equipment and then the actual list of capital equipment. So this is usually uh, demonstrated in a table. And as you can see, we've got the location of the items, what kind of equipment it is, the make, model, serial number, what condition it's in, any comments, and then you get the fair market value. And so the report covers 
capital items individually because each one is evaluated on its own in an independent appraisal process for each capital item. And then smaller items are grouped together. So in this case, you can see we've got our small support items. So we've got fireplaces, ladders, vacuums, janitor carts, dish carts, glassware, stemware, et cetera. And it's just grouped together in one big amount. And that's because the, the methodology for evaluating the small equipment is more of an express methodology. We're talking about small items with lower values. And so we almost always are using a, a depreciation method uh, based on the class of the equipment. So here we have small items. Then we have furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So we've got millwork here, chairs, tables, decor items, et cetera. And then we have the electronic items listed out here as well. And those are all also done in bulk. And then there's a, a reconciliation of final value where everything is added together. And you can see here, it's often presented with a rounded value. In this case, it was rounded to $85,000. And then we have our, our certif certificate uh, for the appraisal. And then a biography of who did the appraisal, a list of the types of businesses and assets that are appraised regularly by CMEAs. And then we have the addenda. So there's uh, definitions and terms, um, glossary, if you will. Uh, and then we have a copy of the engagement agreement so that any user of the report can see the terms and conditions of our engagement as appraisers. And then it's finished off with photographs where we include photos, both of the capital items, and as well as some large photographs that indicate uh, you know, what the overall scene was of the business that was visited. And so that's what a USPAP compliant certified machinery and appraisal report looks like. Um, and many people will comment that it looks very similar to a real estate report. And that's because the real estate appraisers use a version of USPAP um, as, as a standard for the creation of their documents. Uh, USPAP stands for Uniform Standard of Professional Appraisal Practice. And it's a guideline of what a what information needs to be a part of a, an appraisal and what sort of rules and methodologies appraisal appraisers need to follow in doing these evaluation projects. And that's it. Well, thank you very much. For more information, head over to businessandassetvalues.com where you can look at the contact tab and find our phone number, email addresses, et cetera. And if you have a need to get a, a certified appraisal done for machinery and equipment, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to have a conversation and let you know what that might cost and what information we would need to give you an estimate. Thank you.